like this Aroldis Chapman thing, like very yeah. easily can go one way or another. Sure. Like, like we could find out that the Yankees were really lucky that somehow he got the virus, did not spread it to anybody else when he was around the team, and fine, he'll come back in a couple of weeks, and hopefully he'll be okay and fully recovered, and he'll be able to pitch for the Yankees at some point in this shortened season. Or, you know, he, he would have no idea that he had it. He had mild symptoms, so maybe he was shedding it prior to having the symptoms, and then he's all over, and he's messing around. He has no ID. He's touching a bunch of stuff, and then half the team gets it. So... I mean that isn't the case right now, but it's 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 very possible. But I am I am also encouraged. I do think we're going to see sports, but I think the biggest mess that we could see is one of these leagues starts up, things are going well, and then you have one of these yeah. bad case, you know, boomer worst case scenario things uh, <laughs> play out that he's been talking about from the beginning, and all of a sudden you got to shut it down. I mean that would be. That, to me, would be the most discouraging and disheartening way, even more than the league not starting at all. Like, starting up, getting people watching, feeling like it was somewhat normal, and then having to shut down in the middle of it would be the worst. I agree. And a, an abrupt stop after, you know, two or three or four weeks or five weeks, um, yeah, that would really stink because you, you would start to feel, I don't want to say normal because I don't think anything is normal right now, but it would make you feel a little bit more like what we're used to seeing. The one thing I've really missed, uh, and I think a lot of baseball fans would say this too, you know, the NBA, uh, as many games as they play, they play the 82 games, it's still not an everyday sport. I mean, you can have four games in a week for sure. You can have a rare week where you have five games, but you're never playing seven games in a week. You're not playing six games in a week. I miss the day-to-day 7 p.m. appointment television on a Monday, a Tuesday. I mean, it's rare when the Mets and Yankees are both off. It happens, but it's rare. Every single night, you've got something to watch. Every night, it's 7.05 with the Yankees, 7.10 with the Mets based on home games. You know that they're there. I have really missed that. And, you know, another day, too, has been like yesterday was a gorgeous day. There's no question about it. But yesterday was the type of day that the TV would have been brought outside, and the game would have been on, or I would have been listening to John and Susan, or I would have been listening to, you know, the radio guys with with, with, with Howie and, and the Mets. Like, some semblance of baseball would have been on, uh, whether it was background noise or I was locked in on the TV. I've, I really miss that. And as, as the summer has progressed, it's been more and more. Like, you really feel the void. And I guess you could say April, it was like that too. There was no opening day. Yeah, but everything was so new. I felt like our minds were still scattered and still t- trying to grasp everything. As we've gone through the summer now, it's like, all right, it's enough now. Let, let, let's go. Yeah. Let's get back to it a little bit if we can. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I've gotten used to it. I've gotten used to not having baseball, hockey, and basketball at this point. And, you know, it coming back feels different as opposed to it not being around. I think that the real turning point for me, though, is going to be football and what happens with that. I mean, and and baseball was very strange, the fact that it didn't start, and hopefully we actually see it. I mean, because we saw a large chunk of the NHL and NBA seasons and they didn't finish, I still kind of feel like, we got that. True. But but football, to me, as big as it has become in this country, and it's by far my favorite sport, you know, when that starts to be affected, and it, it will, we just don't know how much, that's when it's going to be like, I, I, I it's as hard as it's been able to digest summer without baseball, I think with exactly what you said, because when all of this was happening in the beginning, it was like, all right, we're not going to have stuff for a long time. And my mind sort of processed that. And it was, OK, we're going to have to deal with a summer, a spring without baseball. And if we get it back, great. But I always thought that by the time we got to September, October, that that we'd be OK and there'd be football. That's just what I thought. Little did I know uh, we'd be sitting here talking about the fact that the football season may be canceled as well. But I always thought it was going to be there. And that's the one that if there aren't uh, football on Sundays in September and October, like that's when the real sports depression for me is going to set in. I, I can't even imagine. Like, I honestly, it's not hyperbole. Like, I don't know what that is going to feel like on a September afternoon. September, the weather's still nice. When you get to, like, October, November and on a Sunday with zero football, I mean, there's only, like, Unsolved Mysteries can only put up as many uh, episodes on Netflix for me to digest uh, before there's just nothing else to watch.